right, so we are going to yeah, have some fun flipping this yeah. tire. 500 pounds, right? 550. 550. Crazy. Yeah. Like that's, uh... So because it's a 550 pound tire, yep. when you're lifting it, the initial lift off, you're lifting about 50% of that weight. So you're lifting 225 pounds at the bottom. Oh, okay. Yep. Okay. So show me. Okay. Yep. When you are lifting the tire. Yep. Choco? Okay. Choco. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Okay, all right. When you are lifting the tire, you want to try and get your hands nice and wide and get your chin yep. right onto the right onto the Yeah. Yeah, one one second, one second. Let me go your uh here. Yeah. So okay, let's go. Yep. So Okay, so you wanna try and get your your delts right up against the tire. So you don't wanna be too close here because then you're gonna use a lot of biceps. Yeah. You wanna get your hands Wide up enough so that your delts are going to make contact with the tire. Yeah. And then once you have a good grip, you're just going to squat up. Okay. Once you squat up. Yeah. Then you want to use your thigh. To yeah. Kind of kick it up and get it into this position. Once you have oh. that position, then oh. you're going to toss it over. Okay. All right. <laughs> I tried this one before. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like crazy difficult. Yeah. So when you're actually. Doing it, it should look like this. So you start over here. Yep. Oh. All right. Kick it with the knee. Yep. You get it in this position over here. Yep. Once you have it, you just throw it over. Oh, okay. Cool. All right. Okay, now you can give it a shot. All right. All right. Let me try. Okay. All right. Let's do it. Is that the me? I'm on full camera. Can you see? Okay. Yeah. So I'm on full camera. Your your head's chopped off a little bit, but you're. That's right when I'm right here. Oh yeah, right now you're fine. Right here. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> so now I'll move up. Yeah. yeah. So you want to put your hands a little bit wider. Wider. Yeah. Wider. Yeah. Okay. And then your feet. Yeah. So what you could do with your feet. Yeah, but I like it uh, closer. Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, no, no. Okay, let me go. Okay. Yeah, go ahead. And then your foot, ideally. Yeah. If you put your knee down to the floor, knee down to the floor, like that, yeah. that should be roughly how far away your feet are from the tire. Okay. So you're gonna be in this position over here. Okay. So I'm gonna be this position. Oh. Yeah. Okay. This position. Yeah. Is it right? Yeah. Okay. And then what you're gonna do is once you lift it. Yeah. You want you you don't want to try and lift it with your arms. You want to yeah. keep your arms nice and relaxed. You're yeah. just going to stand up. Yeah. And then you're going to drive your chest and your delts forward yeah. into the tire. Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Oh God! Okay. Kick the knee. Kick the knee. Kick the knee. Ah! Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, next one. Okay, What's next it? I'm going to show you how to do the Atlas Stone. I don't actually have any real Atlas Stones in here, so instead I have this 150 pound slam ball. This is going to simulate the Atlas that, Stone. That's actually a 150 pound? Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. You'll, you'll see when you lift it up. It's <laughs> Man, 150, okay. So when, when you are doing the Atlas Stone, yep. one of the first things that you're going to do Yep. You want to get nice and low to it. Yeah, okay. Get a good grip on both sides. Yep. You are going to stand up. Okay. And you're going to rest it on your thighs. Okay. Once you have it rested on your thighs, you're going to re grip. Yep. Once you re grip. Yeah. And then you're going to toss it on there. Yeah. So you grab it. Yeah. Put it on the thighs. Re grip. Yeah. Lift up. And then put it on the platform. Okay. All right, all right. So is it doing it right now? Okay. But you're gonna show me. Oh, you want me to actually? Yeah, do show it? me. <laughs> show me that I will do it. Okay. Yeah, show me first. Yeah. Okay. You got crazy lats, crazy lats and abs, like amazing. So, okay, so like there. Okay. Go. All right. Okay. Okay. Oh. 
Beautiful. <laughs> okay, let's go. <laughs> oh man! Stiff as a board. If you relax your body and 
you let your lower body hang loose, you're never going to be able to pull yourself. So you want to maintain a nice tight core. And then keep your legs together. You're just going to pull up. Oh, man. And then come back down. So you pull up. Whoa. And back down. So again, keep your core nice and tight. How many you do? can do? The most I've done was seven. Seven? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I feel so weak here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Ah. Uh, Alright. Yeah? Yeah, so tighten up the core, keep the legs together, yeah. everything nice and stiff. Okay. Ah. Uh, here? Yeah. Ready? Okay. Can I jump first? <laughs> you know what, if you need a little bit of help, this is what you can do. Okay. So if you if you can't do... I've never done it. Yeah, if, if you can't do a one-arm pull-up, what you could do is just take a couple fingers. Yeah. And just pull yourself like that and then let yourself lower oh, nice and okay. slow. Okay. So here finger. Alright. Yeah, like so yeah, so you could pull on that. So it's almost like a little bit. Should I use a finger or... <laughs> if you need a full hand, you can use the full hand. Okay. Yeah, the first one, you can use the full hand and then try and use a little bit less oh, okay. strength. So here. Yeah. And then... Oh, yeah. <laughs> It's already heavy! <laughs> oh man! <laughs> I did work my workout today. Oh, yeah. We're here. <laughs> oh my god! Okay. Oh! Wow! You know, like, a lot of people, they, they don't do it. They can't do it. Mm. Wow! So yeah, the one-arm pull-ups. I think it's something like one in a hundred thousand people can do a one arm pull up. Yeah, like you know, even a lot of you know, like a lot of people assume they can do it too. Oh yeah, yeah. So how long you need to practice to get this one? You just did it one time, boom, or no, no. It, it depends on how. Like for me, my back has always been really, really strong, and yeah. I've always worked a lot of my back. Yeah. So for me, the one arm pull ups, I I was able to do it fairly quickly when I put my mind to it. Once I put my mind to it, it took me maybe three weeks to a month to be able to do it. Okay, three weeks to yeah. a month. How many times a week you need to practice? Uh, so I would just, on my, on my back day, I would practice it. So one thing that I did was German volume training one-arm pull-ups on the assisted machine. Yeah. So I would get the chin dip assist, yeah. I put it on there, and then I would do four seconds down, one second up. Yeah. And then I just tried to do it until I was able to do it without any assistance at all. Okay, so so far, based on your opinion, if I practice, uh, uh, how how quickly I can do this one? If I exactly follow your protocol, if you were to do it every single day, I would have to see what your one rep max is for a one arm pull up first. Based on that, around like yeah. that, yeah. I think maximum. Give me a maximum. Yeah. But you know what? You're you were pretty good on the eccentric portion. So because you were able to lower yourself pretty good, I think. Within, I think a month would be a good amount of time for you. Every single day? Yeah, you wouldn't have to do it every single day, I would say. No, I would do it. Why yeah. give me the protocol? I would if, do you, it. if you were to do practice doing one arm pull ups once every four to five days, in the next month, if you were to actually do it for a full hour on those days, I yeah. think you'd be. Oh, full to... hour? Yeah. Oh, okay, every four days? Yeah. Okay, so every four days. How about every single day, small dose? What do you think? You could do that. What's the best protocol? You uh, give me. Uh, so one of the things that I would recommend is start with the chin dip, the chin dip assist. Okay. So put however much assistance you need. Do ten repetitions. Once that feels comfortable, just keep doing it. Oh, okay. And then you can start working with bands. So once you start working with bands, okay. you can put a band on the floor, do a chin up, and rest your feet on there. That way, it's going to get easier towards the bottom position where you're the weakest. Yeah. Because most people, that that initial like. This part right over here, okay. that's going to be the part that's difficult. It's, oh. not, it's not the last little pull. Oh, yeah. So if you could get a yeah, band, actually, yeah. yeah. So if you could get a band on the floor oh. and then make the bottom portion easier. So lengthen, lengthen is uh, weaker. Yeah. So you make a lengthen helping. Yeah. And then uh, shorten you yourself. Yeah. And then once once you find that it's starting to get easy with the band, then if you're using the row the rings. Then you could ah. use this. So one thing that you could do yeah. is you just take two fingers yeah. and you pull yourself up. Okay. And then you just slowly lower yourself. Oh, okay. And then eventually you could just get to the point. So you could, you could, you could over you could overdo it or fine. It all it all depends on how your body recovers. Oh, okay. So I find that with a lot of people, if they're really focusing on strength training, they're gonna need at least three days before they can hit that same body part. Okay. So if you're doing this every Friday right. or Monday, 
okay, sure, let me let me practice. Yeah. <laughs> that looked very cool. Yeah. You know, right. okay, good. Okay, All right, perfect. thank you. What's next? Uh, let's see, what do you want? Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to do some squats on the stability ball. Yeah. First thing you're going to want to do is just put your hands right on the ball and get yourself nice and in place. Yeah. There's a couple ways that you could do it. One of them is to first get on your knees, and then yep. once you're on your knees, you can get one foot up at a time. Yeah. The other way, if you feel comfortable, it's a little scary at first, is just to hop right on. Yeah, I don't so think When you do hop right on, you're just going to jump. Oh man. Ooh. Crazy. Yeah, and then you're just gonna squat down. Wow. Come back up, and then when you are done, just hop right off. Uh, I want you to help me. <laughs> I'll be in front. <laughs> like, oh. So the, the way that I've uh, taught clients in the past, yeah, I'll teach them in baby steps. So the yeah. first thing I'll do is just have them feel comfortable with kneeling on the ball. Okay. Once they feel comfortable with kneeling, I'll have them okay. do one arm off yeah. like that. Once they get comfortable yeah. with that, then I'll have them put one leg off. Okay, nice. And then once they feel comfortable with that, then I'll have them do okay. the second leg up. Okay, okay, alright. How's that? Yeah. Not bad? Yeah. So now, you can try it now just like taking one arm off at a time. Okay, here. Okay. Okay. Switch arms. Okay. Oh, 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 oh. Woo. How's that? Okay, perfect. Now put both hands back on the ball. Yeah. Now that you're comfortable with taking your hands off, let's try and get your right foot onto the ball. So bring your right foot outside of your right hand. Uh, but I don't feel comfortable. <laughs> 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 That's okay. All right. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. I don't feel comfortable. No. So, no. <laughs> so, all right. I want like a, you know like you help me like something like this like this. Yeah. Can I do it? Yeah. Like this. Okay. So. Oh. Man. Okay. Ah. Uh, hang on. Let's how about like this. Let's try it over there. How about I try? Something else. Yeah. So if jumping right onto the stability okay. ball is a little bit difficult, then okay. what you can do is get the rings first, pull yeah. yourself up. Okay. All right. That's. Find a nice, comfortable th spot. They comfortable. look a little more comfortable for then, me. Yeah. Once you find a okay. nice sweet spot, then you can let go of okay. the Okay, sure. Then I will, yeah, make me a little bit more uh, safe. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so here, right? Yep. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, so like this, right? Pull yourself up and then find a good foot position where okay. you feel you got your strong balance. Right. Like a chino. <laughs> oh, ooh. Ooh. Okay. Okay. Okay, now what you're going to do is don't, <laughs> don't let go of the rings just yet. But what yep. you can do yep. with these rings over here, yep. just one at a time, you yep. can. Lift it up like that. Okay, so one end, right? Yeah. Okay. And then okay. Yes, Ooh. The right, and then man. try with the left. Oh man. So you know, so do some, each... somebody can't really bend. Yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There you go. <laughs> okay. Woo! So okay. again, okay. try both hands. Yep. All right. That's good. All right. Okay, now try squatting a little bit, keeping your hands up. Okay. Woo! Oh man. Not easy. Nope. Woo. Okay, so lift up both hands. Try squatting down a little bit. Yep. Woo. And stand up. Oh. Wow. Amazing. Good. Uh, <laughs> amazing. Respect. <laughs> wow. Okay, so what is the okay, what is the benefit of this one? When it comes to the stability yeah. ball, if your main objective is to increase your strength, then yeah. the stability ball is not a good exercise because you're not going to be able to generate as much strength as you would on solid ground. Yeah. If your main objective is to improve your tilting reflexes, then the stability ball is great because the ground is moving below you. Yeah. So when you're training, there's two different reflexes that you can train. You can train your riding reflexes and your tilting reflexes. Okay. Any sport that is on a solid surface, yeah. like tennis, golf, anything like that, you're using your riding reflexes because the ground is not moving. So how do you train with that? 
your writing reflexes are going to be training on solid ground, so just oh. regular squats. Oh, Whereas okay. your tilting reflexes, like plyometric, would help. Plyometrics would be our, an example of writing reflexes because you're jumping on a stable surface. Yes. Tilting reflexes are whenever the ground beneath you is moving. So for someone who is, let's say, a surfer. If you're a surfer, you're oh. using your tilting reflexes oh. because the water moves below you. Skateboard. So yeah, skateboard is another example. So if okay. you are okay. playing a sport that requires the use of your tilting reflexes. What kind of sport? Okay, so surfing would be one example. Uh, another example would be... MMA okay. fighter? Sorry? Uh, mixed martial arts? No, mixed martial arts, you're using your writing reflexes for the most part okay. because you are on a, uh, on a stable surface. Okay. Every sport, though, is going to require some tilting reflexes. So, for example, mixed martial arts, like you just said. Yeah. Mixed martial arts, it's performed on a flat surface and the, the canvas does not move. So, you're using your writing reflexes. Okay. But if there's some sweat on the floor and all of a sudden your foot slips, yeah. that's going to require you to switch to use oh, your tilting reflexes. Okay. So, it's the same thing with. Some more wrestler? Yeah. Some more wrestler. Let's say golf. Okay. With golf. The ground below you, it does not move at all, so you're using your writing reflexes. Okay. But let's say you're playing after it rains, yeah. and then you go, oh. and your cleat ends up just sliding out under the grass. Then all of a sudden, you're going to have to switch from your writing reflex to your tilting so reflex. So who can most benefit from the uh, this exercise? Who? People whose either sport requires a lot of tilting reflexes, or people who are trying to improve their balance and coordination would benefit from using a stability ball. Okay. If your goal is to be the world's strongest man, yeah. the stability ball is not going to help you out. Okay. If your goal is to improve your tilting reflexes or to improve stabilization in your hip muscles, yeah. then the stability ball can help. Okay, alright, thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so now let's show us uh, your abs, like squeeze it, like, man, like crazy, like, man, like, oh, wow, you're like crazy, but sorry, you're so anterior, mm -hmm. yeah, like, like crazy, like, you know, like, so, okay, what do you do with this? I don't train abs at all. Yeah. I do all compound lifts. Um, so my routine on day one, it's my push and pull day. Yeah. I'll do one arm push ups, one arm pull ups. Then I'll do seated military presses yeah. and cable pull downs right now. And then I'll finish off with doing some bench press and some wide grip parallel pull ups. Yeah. And yeah, when I, anytime I do any type of pull up movement, especially the one arm pull ups, the yeah. one arm pull ups, you really have to engage your core a lot. So a lot of my ab training comes just from doing my pulling. So you don't do ab training? I don't do any ab training. Dragon fly, nothing. No, no crunches, none of that stuff. It, it, all, all of my abs come from my, my pull-ups, my squats, and my deadlifts. Okay. Yeah. All right. But of course, you know, your abs are made out from your uh, kitchen, right? Yo, yeah. You gotta be there. Yeah. Like, it, the strength of my abs come from the workout, and yeah. then for them to be able to actually be seen visibly, that comes from what I need. Okay. Good. So, uh, what do you think about, you know, the lean body and health? You know, so super lean. So, do you think that they are healthy? It depends. Some people are gonna feel better at a higher body fat percentage. Some people they can get away with being leaner. Me personally, the lowest I've ever been measured was at four point nine percent. And when I was at four point nine percent, I felt amazing. My sleep was great. I know some people, if they get into the single digits, they're not gonna have that great of energy. It's really a personalized thing. Some people can feel really, really great in the single digits. Other people, they need to be a little bit higher. For me personally, I, I can I can stay lean all year round and still function well. My mental clarity will be great. Yeah. My sleep isn't going to suffer at all. So for, for me, I find that I feel my best when I'm in the single digits. Okay. That's very good. Yeah. For me, uh, I don't know if it's the excuse or not to eat carbohydrates. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, like, um, I feel better, yeah. perform better with this much body fat. Yeah. But I, uh, well, I, uh, I get lean every year, like summertime. Mm -hmm. But I don't really uh, like feeling amazing inside. Mm -hmm. So if I get like super lean, yeah, I only get super lean like you know I do once a year photo shoot. Mm -hmm. like only like two weeks I get lean. Okay. So uh, what do you think about that? Again, if you feel... Is that like a BS or... Uh, you know what, for me, if at the end of the day, if you're happy with how you look, feel, and perform, that's all that yeah. matters. And that's what I tell all my clients as well. If they have, a, if, they ask, if somebody ever asks me, 
what should my body fat be? What should my weight be? I never have an answer to them. It's always uh, whatever makes you look, feel, and perform your best. If you can look in the mirror and say, I'm happy with how I look, and you can honestly say, I'm happy with how I feel, and I'm happy with how I perform, that's all that yeah. matters. Yeah, right now I feel really good. I perform the good, mm. and then um, I'm not 100% satisfied about my looking. Based on before, you know, I did a bodybuilding show and everything. Yeah. But if I try to get lean, body mm-hmm. around, you know, uh, I have to uh, adjust my lifestyle, right? Yeah. You know, I, you know, I, yeah, I drink, I drink wine. Yeah. You know, I like to eat carbs, right? Mm-hmm. So, well, wine is not excuse, but carbohydrate. I sleep better when I eat carb and diet. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, that's what I. That's yeah. that's why. I, so uh, that's so I uh, try to keep this body fat mm-hmm. because I sleep better. Okay. I I keep try. I try by uh, protocol. Yeah. You know, maybe I do uh, eat later or eat carbohydrate at night time. So maybe I I push away my breakfast maybe at eleven or twelve. Mm-hmm. So because uh, we need to calibrate risk freak yeah. to get lean, right? Yeah. So I I yeah I'll still work around my you know by my body. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You still change your, your diet. Me, I, I always like to experiment just to kind of see if there is something out there that will make me feel better than I currently do. Yeah. I've, I've, I've tried everything. I've tried, uh, I've done paleo, I've done keto, I've done carnivore, I've done vegetarian, I've done yeah. vegan. Yeah. For me personally, vegetarian and vegan, I feel bad on them and also it gives me really bad diarrhea so I don't yeah. like to do those ones. Keto, carnivore and paleo make me feel my best. Uh-huh. Particularly... Like, yeah, but those three, those are just the three diets that work best for me, so those are the ones that I like to do, but if if there, anything ever comes out, I'm willing to give it a try to see how I feel, because if there's something out there that can make me feel better than I feel right now, then why not give it a try and see? How about fasting? How long did you fast before? Like, the longest fasting? The longest I've ever done was three days. Oh, okay. Yeah, and I've, I've only done I that about once. I five days. Oh, yeah? Okay. I, yeah, I dropped like 10 pounds. Yeah. Well, when, when I did it, I just kind of did it... Uh, see how I would feel if I were to fast for three days. So I did a three day fast. Day one was a little bit difficult. Yeah. Day two was the easiest day. Okay. Day two had no issues at all. How did you break your fast? Sorry? How did you break your fast? Uh, I broke my fast by doing the meat and nut breakfast. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I, I did a three day fast and then on day four for breakfast I had meat and nuts and then I had meat for dinner. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. A lot of people get uh, break the fast with like bone broth or something. Mm-hmm. Well, for me, when I was doing my fast, I was drinking a lot of tea throughout the three days. Oh, okay. Yeah. So right. technically... No coffee? No coffee, no. I'm not a coffee drinker. Oh, all, all okay. I drink is tea. Uh, so uh, another thing, though, is when you are drinking tea, if you are drinking... If you are doing a fast for the health benefits versus if you are doing a fast for improved enzymatic function versus if you were doing a fast for weight loss yeah there's going to be different things yeah yeah, yeah. if you're Perfect. if you're trying to do a fast for improving your enzymatic function yeah any single calorie is going to stop that so by drinking yeah. the tea yeah. the fast doesn't count uh-huh. if you are doing the fast for longevity purposes yeah okay. then you can still drink tea and it'll be okay if you are doing a fast for weight loss a couple calories here and there is going to kill you yeah i'll help with you right yeah Alright, cool. Alright, thank you. Okay, look here. Like this. Okay, like this. Ready? Yeah. Mine.